All right, what's up? What's happening? It's our first ever members only stream here on YouTube at Craig Hoffman. I guess if you're seeing this, you're subscribed, unless people are watching it later. Uh, that's Tony Squares, my partner in crime on this thing. Uh, you should be following him on, on TikTok and on Instagram. And he's very funny, but also very informative. You want to just like really good information and short bites? That's your guy. Thank What's you. Up? Thank you. No, I'm excited to be here, man. I'm excited to start off the members only channel, the videos we're making for premium subscribers. And as humble as I want to be and, you know, really, you know, not go overboard on myself, this nose is meant to be behind a paywall. So I am excited <laughs> to have the content that we're going at here. And yes, I make the videos on social media. I definitely have been doing that for a while, but really. I've been covering and writing about the NFL and other sports for the past four years, so I'm excited to dive in and talk with you about this. A man who I respect, I have respected since we had our podcast way back when, and you were a frequent guest on that podcast. That we it's both true. went to Syracuse. We're both in this business now of sports media. And even though we both took very opposite routes on how to get here, you <laughs> went the right way, and I trained to be an actor at first. A lot good that did me, but hey, we're here now, and that's all that matters. I'm excited, buddy. And nowhere in acting school do they teach you how to not have a ring light catch on fire? Oh, my God, dude. I it's Thinking on your feet. That's the one thing it taught me, and that's what I took when that ring light caught on fire during a live segment. No ring light today. It'll be back for the next show, but Jesus, that was something else, dude. Yeah, I don't I, wish that on my worst enemy. I highly recommend that uh, that real short TikTok, however you want to consume the story of the, the flaming ring light. Highly recommend uh, Tony Square's uh, uh, a video on that. With video evidence. It was With insane. video evidence. You think we're making it up? Nope. Ugh. Nope. So uh, if you see here at the bottom of the screen, that's what we're going to talk about today on the sports side of things. Real quick, though, uh, for uh, it, most people are going to wind up watching this not live. Uh, mm -hmm. Come be with us live. That's the whole point of this thing. That way we can also, in the future, make this far more interactive. So you go to youtube.com slash at Craig Hoffman slash membership. You sign up. Uh, there's two tiers of membership. There is an instant access. Uh, so we actually schedule out our videos. So if you want to be able to watch all the videos as soon as we post them, you, you sign up for that level. But that's not going to get you here. No, 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 no. Uh, for this, you need the Premier subscription. Now, Premier is a relative term. Like, like we're not, we're not, we're not some highfalutin club here. It's four ninety nine a month. If you want really yeah. fun stuff. And by the way, the more people sign up, the more we'll do this. So, Absolutely. uh, you know, gather a friend or two and, and ultimately we'll do this uh, with a little more frequency. Uh, maybe we'll invite some of our, uh, our fun media friends on. What if I had you and dangles, uh, the, the, the friend of ours that connected us together. What if we got on and you guys were guests on, on technically my show. This is our show, even though my name's on it, uh, cause it's on, on my YouTube channel. But like, what if, what if we had Matt on and we just did a whole reversal from when at this, this relationship started and I was a guest on your show. Well, you know, uh, the Marvel movies are kind of in a downswing right now. So this version of <laughs> Avengers Assemble could really take over. I have not been on a podcast with Matthew Dangles, D'Angelo Antonio, since he had his son, the gorgeous Luca D'Angelo Antonio. I would yes. I would love to get back what in the Italian ring with that, that man because is. as much of a best friend as he is to me in real life, we hate each other when we're talking sports. So it's a lot of fun. I would love to do that, my friend, anytime, any day, any place. All right, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll consider that. We'll put that one in the bag as well as uh, many of our other uh, friends that we have in the business. So uh, let's, let's get rolling, though. Uh, we'll start with some a, a DC sports. This is what I, I spend my days talking about. Uh, mm -hmm. But I think it's fun because you, uh, you, people can, can tell based off the accent. You're not from, not from here, that's for sure. Uh, no. But your team, you're actually a Packers fan who is yep. from New England and lives in L.A. Uh, so good luck, good luck triangulating that on a map. Uh, but you, I always think it's fun to talk with like sports fans that are not in it every day, but like you're in it every day, but not like the commanders in it every day. So what, 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 uh, where are you at on this number two pick? And after watching an, an insane amount of my videos is yeah. uh, we're working together here. Uh, you know, maybe you are in it every day now. Point is what, what did you want to ask me about the number two pick? Well, it's it's there's obviously a lot of questions going on. Who will they pick at QB at number two? There's all these options. And as me as an NFL fan, regardless, the draft is a special time because you get to see the next steps of the league taking place. And for me, I've always had a soft spot for the Washington football franchise for whatever reason, the uniforms or the team themselves. I've always wanted them to succeed. And so now that Dan Snyder is gone and we sort of have an uplifting moment for Washington, I am very excited and intrigued by what happens at number two. And I've heard you talk about the different QBs, the pros and cons of them. I've heard you discuss them endless with a bunch of guests that are way smarter than the both of us. And it's been awesome content. But what I want to get out of you is not who you would pick, but sort of more of a philosophy question, because at my heart, I am a gambler. OK, and if I'm sitting there at number two 
And my scouts, let's just for the sake of argument, my scouts say that these guys are not going to be bust. There's no Zach Wilson in this group. You know, they might be projects. They might, you know, be better or worse than you think. But there's really no busts here. You can pick your favorite and you can be OK. If that is the case. I don't think you could offer me a godfather package, 11 and 23 from Minnesota and a future first and whatever else. I don't think there's any package you could offer me that would ever get me to move back off of number two. I would always stick there in my philosophy and take the quarterback because, as we know, you aren't going anywhere without one. And I, my question is to you, is there is there any merit? In trading back, even if your roster is the XFL's Birmingham Stallions, like if, is there any merit into you trading back knowing that four years from now you could be at a bar somewhere watching the guy you could have drafted become the next Joe Burrow? And there's no way like the 17th pick in 2025 is going to make you feel any better that you missed out on the guy. So that's my question to you. Yeah, it's such an interesting philosophical question because I think if your roster is the Birmingham Stallions, even if that quarterback works out for another team, you have to be honest with yourself and be like, that guy wasn't going to work out for me. Yeah. I had the Birmingham Stallions. So I think that, that be, that's like one part of it. I think the second part of it is like, what separation do you see between these three guys? And this is a question I really struggle with. We actually like got into it pretty good on Take Command that I recorded uh, many recordings and many hours ago, uh, as they sit here at 12, 15 on a Thursday, I've, I've somehow been in front of this microphone for an insane amount of time already today. And I still have a three hour radio show, uh, to do. Uh, anyway, the point is, um, if you don't feel like there's a huge separation between the three guys that are going to be available between yeah. McCarthy, May and Daniels, and let's say they're all, let's even say like, you think May is a $4 quarterback, like yeah. Caleb's a $5 quarterback, uh, Daniels uh, or May is a $4 quarterback. McCarthy and, and Daniels, for the sake of this, are $3 quarterbacks. That's going to make some people so mad, but just roll with the money analogy. Hypothetical, right? yeah. Is it worth it to you to get one of the $3 quarterbacks instead of the four, but also a 2 or $3 player with that extra pick? Because $6 is better than $4. And if you just take the $4 quarterback, yes, you have the better quarterback, but you still only have $4. And that, to me, is the ultimate question here, is how risky is it to gamble like that uh, on terms of your ability to still get one of those guys? Can you trade back and trade back up? Or do you think that one of those guys will fall? Uh, or also, and then it's also like, do you actually think that they're that close? Is one a four and a three? Yeah. Or is one a four and then the other one's a one? Because you're not winning with the $1 quarterback. And so I no, think yeah. that that is at the heart of the question. I am at the point where I think all three of them are pretty equal prospects. I have concerns about all three i have things i love about all three but they are very different stylistically which then lends me to say that they probably will not trade back because one of them is going to fit what they're looking for much better than the other two even if they could if yeah. push came to shove make the other two work let's say all of them reach because i like what you're talking about there let's say all of them reach their potential all three of the quarterbacks reach the ceiling that they can achieve if craig hoffman is building a team not the commander's roster but just a team which quarterback archetype are you most interested in because i know i have mine uh drake may has the high ceiling of the three and even if you like a you know you like a, a quarterback who can go on an 80 yard run i get it Jaden daniels is is very gifted and I think we often confuse what makes good floors and good ceilings. Running is a floor, arm talent, and the ability to deliver all different kinds of throws and withstand hits in the pocket and extend plays. Like That's how a quarterback gets the ceiling. And of that, Drake May has the highest ceiling. The hard no, part is he's also got that. the lowest floor. So I don't know what to make with that. That's like Drake may scares the bejesus out of me because I'm like, that dude could be terrible. He could bust. I don't, I don't think like he's got mental, like I, the, some of the, the processing or yeah. like not going to work or anything like that. It's just like, I don't know if he's going to put it together and that scares me, but God, if he does, he could be awesome. And so that like huge boomer bust thing scares the bejesus out of me. No, I'm with you on that. And I think there's a big boomer bust with J.J. McCarthy. This is a guy that I watched a lot, a lot of college football of. I am no, uh, in no way would call myself a scout or an analyzer of tape. I definitely dive into it during the NFL season. But when it comes to college transitioning into pros, I would never call myself an expert in that. And there are enough people much smarter than me that have said J.J. McCarthy deserves to be in this conversation. It was something I never saw coming. Uh, to me, I'm right there with you, though. If I'm getting the ceiling out of all these guys, Drake May, to me, is the number one prospect in my eyes. I will say the betting markets, which I pay attention to because how to bet the NFL draft is 
a huge, a huge area of opportunity for people out there. And the betting markets have Jaden Daniels pretty much securing more and more every day that he's going to be the number two pick. And, uh, you know, it could be a smokescreen. We all didn't know Baker Mayfield was going to go number one overall. We all didn't know um, the the defensive end in uh, Jacksonville was going to go number one overall. But, again, Jaden Daniels, according to the betting markets, could be the QB in Washington. And regardless, you know, I guess we can transition to what else they've done this offseason. Regardless, if this quarterback even comes close to working out, I think they have a real chance of being successful this year, whether it's Jaden, Drake, or JJ. And I'm excited for Washington as a whole because of it. I've been really pumped by this offseason that they've had. Yeah, um, just real quick, I would say, we talked about this this morning too, like if I had to pick one to start week one, it'd be Jaden. He's yeah. he's the guy who's most ready right now, which makes sense. He's the oldest, uh, he's the most experienced, um, but also his game has more safety nets in it than the other two. Yeah. I then put J.J. McCarthy second on that list and Drake third. So take that for what you will. Like the ceilings and the floors in terms of readiness are opposite, and that's why this is so damn hard. And yeah. um, why Adam Peters makes a lot of money. I presume. Well, well uh, bef before we move on, because you brought that up, I've heard you talk about this with multiple people on your show, like Michael Phillips saying that they don't want to have a QB start week one if he's a rookie. They want to have, sadly, it's Marcus Mariota, but they want right. to have a veteran quarterback take those week one reins. And I don't think I could disagree anymore. I understand the pitfalls of having a guy start too early and lose his confidence. We saw what happened with Bryce Young. But I think those reps, especially for a guy that doesn't have them, I think they're essential in this game. And you can manage. You can make stuff work. You can figure out your flaws when you're actually playing in the games. Yes, Jordan Love, my favorite quarterback in the world, sat for three years and came out a gunslinger. But that's not always the case. Sometimes you need those live reps. So to me, whoever I'm drafting, I think you're the, they're the week one starter, especially with Mariota back there. Do you disagree with that? The irony is rich coming from a Packers fan on that. Yeah, like right. Love and Rogers both sat for a long time. And by the way, fixed a lot of the similar flaws that we see in like a Drake May. Uh, a lot of the footwork stuff got cleaned up in practice. I do think that if they're going to play, they need to be heavily incubated. And that is something that we saw a massive failure last year. Like Sam Howell perhaps could have been a lot more successful if he was incubated. He was not. He was thrown to the wolves. It was like, let's see what you can do. And he's like, yeah. how do I swim? And it's like, you just swim. And it's like, no, like give that dude some floaties. Um, and so if you can, if you can make their job a lot easier, heavy dose of running the football, a lot of play action, some predetermined yeah. stuff, like there's a way to call a game that makes it a lot easier on your quarterback and you can incubate them and almost like sit them while playing them, if you will. Fine. If you put too much on their plate, now you're threatening long-term damage. And that that's yeah. how I would answer. Like if you, if they're better than Mariota and you're going to call a game like that anyway for Mariota, cause you also want to overexpose him. Okay. Um, but I also like, to me, it's about what's most, like, I don't really care that it's Marcus Mariota. I wish it was Jacoby Brissett or someone better, um, because that's going to make this, the actual games more fun. I might care in the fall, but I care most about like what ultimately happens with that quarterback. So, um, yeah. the interim is just, it's that it's interim. More yeah, waiting, 20, more patience. 2024 is not the season you're building this team for. You're yeah. building it for farther down the road. That being said, I, I was astonished at the Marcus Mariota signing because, uh, you know, Jacoby Brissett probably didn't want to be there anymore after what happened to him last year uh, and maybe wanted to go back home to New England, maybe as a chance to start New England. But out of all the QBs you guys could have grabbed for a free agency that I've adored otherwise, I really have. I was very surprised at the Marcus Mariota signing because I, you had a guest on your show telling him that he quit on the Atlanta Falcons, and he did. He definitely did quit on the Atlanta Falcons, and now he's coming out. He wasn't good for Atlanta. He wasn't going to be good for Philly. They were very okay to let him walk away, and now he could be potentially the week one starter, definitely the backup in that room for a rookie quarterback. I would have liked a guy who was a little bit more – reliable at this point in his career. Ryan Fitzpatrick, I'm not Ryan Fitzpatrick, Ryan Tannehill is still uh, out there as a free agent. Guys like that, that I would have brought in that to me have a little bit more pedigree than in this age of Marcus Mariota. I, I don't know. Matt, were you as angry at that signing as I was, or am I taking a little overboard? I, I don't think I was as angry as you or most other people, but I also get your frustration, right? Like I also would have preferred Jacoby Brissett. I also, I was the first guy, I feel like, you know, I hate when hosts do this, but like, I was the guy who said, like, it ain't about me, but like, I, from go, for whatever it's worth, Circle Tannehill is like, that's the guy that I want. Um, if I can't get Brissett. Yeah. That was my order. Brissett, Tannehill, basically, Tyrod Taylor, everyone else. Yeah. Um, and, but it, it does come down to a couple things that I think are justifiable, right? And you have to just trust the people. If we go, hey, we're really happy they hired Brian Johnson, the former quarterbacks coach in Philadelphia, then you can't be mad when Brian Johnson makes a decision. Like, I mean, yeah. I guess you can, 
I'm not going to, I'm not going to legislate people's feelings. Um, but I, it, it's not, uh, it's not a through line of logic. So yeah. I, I think if Brian Johnson, who had Mariota as the backup to Jalen Hurts last year is like, that's a guy that I want, or at the very least a guy that I can work with. And I think will be a good backup because I just saw him do it. Great. I th- and, and then I kind of put my larger hat on and look at the situation in Atlanta and it's like, okay, well, can we justify it? Can we make sense of it? Marcus Mariota got hurt. Um, he had just had, I believe his first child, he Mm -hmm. is from Hawaii, uh, and it was a chance for him to leave the team and get precious time with a newborn, um, that he wasn't going to get and he couldn't play. He couldn't practice. He could like, yes, he could have sat meetings and been helpful. So he was, he the best teammate? No, in that way, but he got a chance to be on a human level, a father in a way that a lot of NFL guys have to skip. And I am not going to hold that against him, especially when, Dealing with Arthur Smith seems like a bit of a pain in the ass. Um, and so if it happened to a different coach and different whatever, like when there's a miscommunication in something with Arthur Smith and I watch Arthur Smith press conferences and Arthur Smith interact with people, I go, you know, maybe I'll give the other guy the benefit of the doubt. And so yeah. is it ideal? Is it clean? No. But it also doesn't seem to be the character of who he is based off of everyone else that talks about Marcus Mariota and really likes the guy. Um, yeah. He does have a ton of experience. He's played more football than a lot of these other people that, that, that uh, guys wanted to, or that fans wanted to sign. So I, I get it. Um, and I'm just kind of going to trust that Brian Johnson vouched for him for a good reason. I would have, as I said, I would have loved other guys. And I think specifically with Tannehill, Tannehill very much made it clear last year. He didn't want to be a backup. He was not yeah. happy in Tennessee. So if he's coming to you saying like, I'm not looking to back up a kid and be a mentor. It's like, well, I guess we can't sign you then because you need that. And Mariota to his credit, made it very clear from the press conference. Like he knows his role. He's yeah. going to embrace his role and try to be a star in his role. And his role is help the young kid, hopefully replace you. And if you have to play football in the meantime, do your best. Yeah, no, I hear you on that. And as you say, talking about, uh, you're okay with him being a father, not a football player. I don't have a heart for that thing, man. I'm all about the football. <laughs> I'm all about making the right bets and it. making the right picks for these teams. I'll, I'll put that out there early, but uh, as from Marcus Mariota's side, You've been through a lot of rebuilds covering this D.C. football team in your time there. And this one particular, where you came in with so much cap room. You came in with all these opportunities. And to me, one of the probably a bottom three roster in the league the year prior, along with Tennessee and Carolina. And so now the job was set forth to how do we do this? Do we throw huge bags at some of the big guards on the market or some of the big uh, names on the market? Or do we do what we did, and that is bring in okay veterans like I don't believe these guys are going to blow the doors off I don't believe Cleveland Farrell is going to have a 20 sack season but at the same time with as many holes that you guys had I loved almost every move that you made because training camp next year is going to be a slog for any one of those people drafted in the first 100 picks like they're going to be expected to be blue chip players and playing next to Bobby Wagner who's, who's going to show them how it's done and that to me was awesome this is exactly what you guys needed to do you fill the roster with guys who have been there before and they might not be the stars of their craft but there is such more solid of a base than you guys have had in the past few years as a guy who covers this team that has to light a fire under you a little bit do you agree with these massive uh, not massive moves but massive amount of moves that they've made yeah they needed to change over a lot and they they did they got lucky that a lot of contracts were up and they're like you can leave and you can leave and you and you and you and you and you can also leave and yeah they're pl- like but that that's only one part like who do you actually replace them with and a couple of these guys are like good football players frankie yeah. was a really freaking good football player jeremy yeah. chin if he's healthy like that dude could be around for the long term. He's 24, and he yes. was runner-up to Rookie of the Year in his rookie year. Now, who? Wa- oh, right, it was Chase Young. So things can change, uh, but like that's the quality of football player that we're looking at there. And so I think what you've done is you've got new leadership in every single room, basically in the building. You know, Chin uh, is a, is a different guy to lead that, and and some of these veteran corners that they've signed. Like yeah. that DB room looks very different. And like Kendall Fuller is a great football player, but you can't change without changing. And so you bring in someone different, uh, middle or obviously linebacker Wagner. What more do you want to say? Um, defensive end uh, or defensive line. Like John Allen has kind of had to be a leader since he was a young guy, especially when yeah. Kerrigan left. Um, we had, we had well, our biggest video ever on this channel um, wound up being when Kedrick Golston came on the show in the middle of last season before all the chase young stuff, like fully blew up, or maybe it was right after he got traded. I think it was. And Ked said, 
Chase's relationship with the team changed when Kerrigan left. Because all mm. of a sudden, there was kind of no one there to check him. And Kerrigan, even though he was kind of a quiet leader, like, it was still Ryan Kerrigan. His presence was there. And when he's yeah. there as a coach, it's different. And so I think that getting Cleveland Farrell, Cleveland Farrell who's just like a grindstone worker, um, yeah. Lawrence Armstrong, who knows how DQ operates, like, Sharif Floyd has been with DQ forever. Like getting these guys in the room takes some of the pressure off of Allen, who'll still be the leader, but it doesn't feel like it's all on him in the way that it has been in the past. And then offensively, same thing, right? Zach Ertz is going to be one of the best voices in that room, and he's as respected as anybody in the whole freaking league. Um, and then we'll see, you know, who else? Mariota, I'd assume, has some kind of role there as a guy who's been around the league, probably more respected in the league than he is out of it because it's yeah. him. Everyone outside the league hates that dude. Um, and so uh, just ask her. Also, the, the offensive linemen they signed. Like, all these guys yeah, are flag Allegretti, bearers. Like, yeah, when Biotish. you line up for drills at, at training camp, there's going to be a fight to who goes first. And that's what you want out of a football team. And I'm very I, – I think it was a bunch of great, exactly as you said. This team now has maybe not cornerstones. Some of them will turn out to be cornerstones, but definitely building blocks on a They're team that you can pieces. now use these draft picks and explode upon. Yeah, I mean, I'm not going to wear out the analogy that I've, if God, if you're watching this video and, and the, you're, you've already subscribed, you've definitely heard this analogy before, but it's the foundation, right? It's the thing that yeah. goes under the ground that nobody sees, but four years from now is the thing that's holding everything else up. And so yeah. when they have a Super Bowl winning house, uh, hopefully Lord willing in the next, you know, decade here, uh, Adam Peters does this uh, and builds it up right with, with DQ. Like these are the guys, Eckler, that are going to matter because of how they set the example. Um, and yeah. it, by the way, the same thing that Peters did in San Francisco. And like, I'm lucky enough that, uh, and typically in the other box on this, this monitor in front of me is, is another guy with a great beard and Logan Paulson, who was a part of that in 2017 in San Francisco. And Logan will tell you like some of the things that he sees in San Fran now were things that they implemented back then. And nobody's like, Oh, thank God. Logan Paulson was here as the third tight end. And by the way, we cut him three times during the season, I think. Um, but it's like, Logan mattered to the foundation that they set. They built yeah. on that, and now they've got what they've got in San Francisco, and that's yeah. exactly what a lot of these guys are going to wind up being here. I'm excited for it, man, and you should be. And I don't know about a Super Bowl ring, maybe an NFC Championship loss to Jordan Love and the Packers. Bro, That'd be we'll a nice finish for them. But playoff appearance, then we'll work on a playoff win. This team hasn't won 12 games since 1990. This is the last time they won a Super Bowl. 91. Oh my goodness, that's Tony, that's barren. Let me let me educate you real quick. That's okay. barren. Let me educate you on DC sports mediocrity. Okay. The Washington Wizards have not won 50 games since 1979. 1979. Yeah. That is the longest yeah. streak in the NBA by yeah. miles. Yeah. Uh, the Washington uh, Commanders football team, old nicknames, have not won 12 games since 1991. That is the longest streak in the NFL by a mile. The Lions have done it like multiple yes, times. They have. Not just not just because they were good last year. The no. Lions have done this multiple times. The Browns, they wouldn't yeah. even exist for a portion of that. They have won 12 games more recently than the Washington whatevers. Like, this is who we are, bro. Until yeah. until the Caps made the conference finals in 2018, the year they won the Cup, there yeah. had been no D.C. sports team in the conference finals of their league since 99, the last time the Caps had made the Stanley Cup final. Well... It's in response to that, and you're not going to like this answer that I'm going to give you, but it's the same answer I give all my fellow Detroit Lion fans, my Michigan friends, uh, who have yelled at me for years about at least Green Bay made the NFC Championship. They didn't win it, but at least they made it. I would kill for a playoff berth. Now Detroit knows to get that close and to lose out on it is so much worse than a 4-12 and season. So be thankful you don't have that heartbreak at the end of the season, and rather it's just a regular... You get to spend more time with your family. Like, uh, yeah. who's that it's great... It's the hope uh, Joe, that kills you. Joe talks hope. about how you get to spend time in Thanksgiving, go apple picking when you know your team stinks. Be thankful for those Sundays, because now, hopefully, your Sundays will have more meaning moving forward, and you'll learn the true heartbreak of being this close at the end and not quite getting there. Yeah, it's kind of like crashing on the final lap of a race. Yeah, That was a George Russell joke. Okay, uh, transitioning uh, to the final thing. This is the kind of stuff that you don't get on the radio uh, no. because I, I have to appeal to a mass audience of DC sports fans. But I am a huge F1 fan. Thanks, Drive to Survive. But I'm not one of these people that only watches Drive to Survive. No, I watch the races on the yeah. weekend. You, sir, also do. And you put out great F1 content on TikTok. Uh, so we are now full on an F1 silly season. Typically we get a little bit further into the season, but when Lewis Hamilton starts silly season before the season, the whole season is thus 
silly season. Uh, yes. You've also got, though, silly season enhanced and more insidiously by what is going on at Red Bull uh, with Christian Horner and people behind the scenes being like, this is terrible. Obviously, yep. folks like Hamilton have come out and demanded more transparency. Good job, Lewis. Uh, but at, at the always end of the day... Always a good job, Lewis. Literally, yeah. always a good job, Lewis. Yeah. 100% hit rate. That's why he's knighted. Um, yeah. So it seems like Verstappen's not exactly thrilled despite the fact that he gets to drive a rocket ship every week. Um, yeah. You've obviously got Sergio uh, Perez. Uh, his seat is seemingly always in flux. Um, yeah. You've got Carlos Sainz, who is the most recent race, race winner, uh, at, despite the fact that he got appendix removed two weeks ago. Crazy. Um, like, he's a free agent uh, who needs a seat for next year because Lewis is taking his seat at Ferrari. Um uh, where do you want to start with this? Because we're going to talk about silly season for five minutes, and I'm going to enjoy the hell out of it. Well, let me, let me put it into perspective with people who don't follow F1, and thank you for still listening. If you do this, there are only 20 seats, and there are only 20 professional drivers in F1 each year. And going into this off season, at the end of this season, 70 percent of those seats are entering free agency. So imagine any sport you know where 70% of the players are entering free agency. And there are teams that have zero people signed for next year. Literally, zero drivers signed for next year. So when we talk about silly season, we're talking about biggest names in the game. Lewis Hamilton is their Tom Brady. Max Verstappen is their Patrick Mahomes. And these guys, it is unknown whether they will be staying with their team and flip-flopping otherwhere. Uh, Lewis Hamilton started this year by saying he's joining the Dallas Cowboys. Literally the Dallas Cowboys. He is going to Ferrari and being their guy. And Ferrari, whether it be because they their their cars have gotten better or the drivers have a fire lit under them, that team has now risen to the challenge and are challenging the number one team in the world, Red Bull Racing. Yes, that is an energy drink. They're also a racing team, and they are challenging them now week to week, putting times up. The biggest question mark is the best driver in the world, the Patrick Mahomes, Mr. Max Verstappen. The guy's won the last three world championships in a row, the last two in dominant fashion. He won the most races ever won in a season last year. And because of what's happening off the field, off the track, with his boss, with his Andy Reid, there is a question mark that a guy signed through 2028, Max Verstappen, could be leaving. And that could shift the dominoes in a way we've never seen before in this sport. This is a sport usually dominated. OK, and usually you're rooting for second, third, who comes in fourth. It's usually a sport that is it is rare. We have two guys fighting at it, and it's so exciting when we do. But to have Max Verstappen, to have Pat Mahomes leave the Kansas City Chiefs and join the Oakland Raiders, uh, it would cause chaos in this sport. And I'm personally rooting for it because of how much I despise Red Bull racing. But that's Same. just me. Same. I can't stand them. I Horner is insufferable. And that was before he was accused of like sexually harassing one of his employees who has since been suspended. And we don't know whether that's because she made stuff up, uh, which is what like basically they're claiming, uh, which yeah. statistically speaking never happens. Um, at, or, uh, Horner did it, which is far more likely, uh, because they won't release any of the reporting and are hiding no. behind. Oh, we got to protect. Like, no, we, this is, this is crazy. Um, anyway, not to get sidetracked on that, um, too much, but like this, like but with people, I think that the the shift in understanding Formula One happens when you realize that it's not a race. It's an engineering contest. And yeah. Red Bull currently has the best engineers by a lot. Um, they also happen to have probably the best driver. I mean, Verstappen, the, 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 the way that he is able to drive that car versus Checo, who is also very talented. Very talented. Um, like he's probably the best driver in the sport, but I would love to see Lewis or Charles or uh, Carlos Sainz drive that same Red Bull and see if they could have the same dominating results. But yeah. if all of a sudden one of the obviously premier drivers in the sport goes to Mercedes and who knows, maybe some of the engineers would, would be shifting behind the scenes as well. You could see this unprecedented level of competitiveness, which I think, especially with where, and this is where all the Europeans that are definitely subscribed and listening to this channel get very, very mad. I've been watching this for years, but especially as the sport grows in the US and like, we're just not used to one team dominating and you're not as much into the downstanding stuff. Like, I think that stuff's fascinating. I love the yeah. sport the way it is, yes. but if you can have challenges for championships, that's good for a sport. And I think especially with the drive to survive audience kicking up popularity, not just in the US, but really around the world, like, what a time for Formula One if that if that happens to happen. It, it, what a time indeed. And it is a very European sport in that, or European mindset of sport in that. We, we got to make Americans, the Champions League. We as Americans only care about the winner. Everyone else is a loser. Who comes home with the trophy at the end? Yes, you're kind of excited, as you said, if Washington makes the playoffs cool. But in the end, you want to win the whole thing. 
And in F1 and in soccer and other European sports, there's very much tiers. You know you can't compete with the big dogs, so I want to beat everyone else in my tier. And that's the beauty of F1. You find because of Drive to Survive and other things, there are only 20 players here, so you get to know each one of them personally on a personal level. Uh, you start to root for them. You want them to beat so-and-so. Yeah, they're not going to catch the top five, but if they come in six, that's a huge win for them, huge win for their team. And that's the stuff that you start rooting for. And the other beauty of it is such the personalities. And as you said, the silly season, you could throw a million different permutations on how 2025 lineup looks like. And that stuff starts happening now. We start learning who's going to sit next year at this point in the season heading into the summer. And so you got to finish the season with a team that you know you're stabbing in the back to go race for their rival. It is a beautiful time. And yes, the engineers matter too. And some engineers are tied to the driver, especially in Red Bull. So that separation of church and state in Red Bull could be huge to that team. And the reason you might be asking, we've brought up Christian Horner and stuff that's happened to him, uh, accused of stuff happening uh, from per, uh, someone that was a subordinate to him. Why aren't they just getting rid of him? Well, there are big money owners in Red Bull as well that some people buddy buddy up to. It is a it is very a political sport. And it's oh, going yeah. to be interesting in what Red Bull chooses at the end, because I don't believe there is a road where we land in 2025 with both Christian Horner and Max Verstappen in the same building. And that that's a beautiful thing to watch as a fan. Terrible <laughs> if you're on Team Red Bull. All right. So two that, two questions. One, how can Verstappen leave if he's under contract? Because he is signed through 2028. Like do, are these are these uh, I'm trying to think of other sports where you can just throw your contract out but why well, it's not the nba like it's not the nba where they can just say i'm ben simmons i'm not playing anymore like th there are definitely contractual obligations we had oscar piastri a driver who was signed with one team went to another one and they took it to court saying no you have to stay with us and they ended up losing that case but there are definitely like teams will hold on to their drivers apparently and this is being reported there is a clause in max verstappen's contract again 2028 he's signed until that if one of the heads of red bull leaves his name's helmet marco if he leaves red bull Max Verstappen is open, is free to rip up his contract and do whatever he wants. And again, this adds to the politics of it. This helmet Marco is more of an advisory role. And if he decides that Christian Horner and Red Bull is untenable and he says, I'm leaving, it opens up the door for Max to do the same. And that's the juggling that the, whoever's running Red Bull needs to do. They need to figure the, all this out fast. And it's so, not happening fast. So then the ultimate question is, if you're whoever that rich person is that owns Red Bull and is the, the one person or the part of the board that is more powerful than Christian Horner as the team principal, do you pick Christian Horner or do you pick Max, pick Max Verstappen? That's the question. As you said, it's an engineering battle. And again, there's no signs that the engineer will stay if Max Verstappen leaves. But it, it, we just saw Carlos Sainz win in a Ferrari and look very competitive in a Ferrari while Max was still racing. Could Carlos Sainz, who's a free agent, sit in that Red Bull seat and do the same thing with the same results? It is, I, I do not know what the possibilities are, what the future beholds for that Red Bull team, but that's the decision they have to make. Who is more important and not more important, but who is more easily replaceable? Because Max is the best, but he's also in the best car. If we put another good in the best, could they be the best? You know, because if yeah. Max ain't driving Red Bull, he's driving a worse car. <laughs> so, that's, you know, so that's true. Um, God, if I can, if I'm Mercedes, I'm like, helmet, your name is Come helmet. on down. We're the German company. Come on down. Come on down. What's Seems your salary? We'll quadruple it. Get over yeah. here. No kidding. All right. Yeah. That's, uh, that's our live show. Our members only show. Uh, thanks for, for those that checked it out, you know, live. Uh, but if you are catching this later on delay, don't forget you can be with us live next time. The more members that we get, uh, the more th this becomes an interactive show. Uh, and, and you know, you'll still be hearing from, from Tony and I because that's how that works. But we'll be reacting to your comments. Uh, we'll answer your questions. So uh, this will be really fun. Uh, YouTube.com slash at Craig Hoffman uh, slash, or slash at Craig Hoffman slash membership. That's how it is. So slash membership. Just go to click click my face and then hit the membership tab. Uh, so that's how it works. Uh, it's four ninety nine a month. Uh, also we have the instant access membership, which will give you access to, uh, these videos or to all our videos on demand, as opposed to having to wait for when we schedule them to go public. Uh, that's it. And that's all, uh, on, on the, the public one last thing from my end. Say, and then, Craig, yes, one last uh, thing I got to say, Craig, before you end the show, I know you want to wrap up here. I got to say excellent sports media guy. You are not the best salesman. We can work on that membership pitch. Yeah. Another time. Yeah, we probably need to do that. I was going to also say that people should follow you on TikTok. Uh, search, search Tony Squares. I guess we'll leave that Instagram. part out then. Yeah. Um, but don't do that anymore because he's a jerk. I'm just kidding. 
Follow Tony and buy our stuff. Cheers.